Welcome to the Plant Free MD podcast with Dr. Anthony Chafee, where we discuss diet and nutrition and how this affects health and chronic disease, and show you how you can use this to optimize your health and happiness, both mentally and physically. Hey guys, just want to take a second to thank our sponsor at Carnivore Bar. I don't promote many products because honestly, all you need to be healthy is to just eat meat. For those times that you're out hiking, road tripping, or stuck at work and you want a nutritious snack that is just meat, fat, and salt if you want it, the Carnivore Bar is a great option. So I like this product not because it's just pure meat, but also because I want the carnivore market to thrive as well. And the more we support meat-only products, the more meat-only products there will be available in the mainstream. So if this sounds like something you'd like to get behind, check it out using my discount code ANTHONY to get 10% off, which also applies to subscriptions, giving you 25% off total. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. Hello, everyone. This is uh, Dr. Chafee, and I have a very special guest uh, with me today, Joey Schwartz, who's a young man down in uh, UCLA, I believe. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Who has uh, recently come on to the carnivore diet and has started making uh, his own videos and coming on other people such as, as Bart K um, and uh, to talk about the carnivore diet and how it's affected him. Joey, how are you? Thank you for coming on. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, yeah. I'm great. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you. Um, so for, for people who haven't come across you, can you tell us uh, you know, about yourself and you know, uh, where you're coming from and, and a bit of your background? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, of course. So I've always been interested in nutrition. And this was really, you know, I really got interested when I was about 16. And, you know, everyone's getting into weightlifting, and we're trying to build muscle and get strong. And of course, we're seeing all these bodybuilders who are emphasizing the importance of diet, which is a great thing. I mean, it's, it's good that people can accept that the food that we eat has a massive impact on the way we feel and the muscle that we put on and things like that. So, but the issue was that they were saying the wrong stuff. You know, they're saying, eat lots of rice, eat lots of whey protein and carbohydrates and banana before you work out and low fat. But if you want to eat healthy fats, you eat an avocado, lots of chicken breasts, you know, cook with the egg whites. And I was doing that. I was doing all the stuff. I was going by the book because I've always been very disciplined. And, you know, if I want to do something right, I'm going to do it. And that's what I thought was right. That's my mom, who's who's a nutritionist, preaches a very similar ideology, or at least did up until fairly recently when she's realized that animal food is actually, you know, the great food, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm doing, I'm doing, you know, the the classic bodybuilder diet, if you will. And it's it was destroying my health. Like it, it was really, really destroying me. I'm I ended up getting a variety of skin issues. I had pimples all over my arms. My I, my rosacea started flaring up all the time. It was pretty bad. I had low energy. I didn't want to work out. I was just motivated to do so by my friends who was kind of a collective energy, but I wasn't doing well. And then I learned about ketosis, which I thought this was cool. They're literally doing a studies where they take one group with lots of carbs and one group with low carbs and the low carbs is doing better. Okay, cool. I'm not going to eat carbs. This, this makes a lot of sense. But vegetables are still good in my opinion. You know, vegetables are the ultimate health food. We need them. The absolute best thing you could you could do for yourself, right? That, that this is what I thought that's what that's what 16 years of brainwashing will do so <laughs> I, I'm, I'm still eating the vegetables and I'm, I'm in ketosis I thought I mean I'm cooking with tons of olive oil heating it up which is a huge problem and I'm cooking broccoli peppers like cauliflower spinach all that nasty stuff and I'm just eating it with you know plant-based fats like coconut I'm putting coconut and seeds on it and it, it was a mess, you know, it was a mess because I was still afraid of animal fat. I didn't think that saturated fat was good for me and I was scared. So I'm in ketosis in some ways I'm, it's slightly better. You know, my blood sugar is a bit more regulated. I'm not having these massive ups and downs and crashes, but it was still really bad because I was ingesting so many plant toxins and it was really, really hurting me. I, you know, after I ate a meal, just some peppers, right? My skin would just flare. I get itchy everywhere. It was terrible. And then I see this, this crazy guy, Paul Saladino on, mm. on TikTok or YouTube, and he's saying vegetables are bad. Vegetables are bad. I keep scrolling. Well, th this is nonsense, right? How could vegetables be bad? The <laughs> ultimate health food. But then he keeps appearing. I'm like, what if there's something <laughs> to this? And the way he explained it makes sense. You know, these are the parts of the plant, the bulbs, the tubers, the roots, the leaves, the stems that are trying to protect the the fruit that you know is supposed to germinate and, and so forth and what what's happening there is they're inflicting you know biological warfare on anyone that eats them because there's all these toxins that are condensed into this part of the plant that doesn't want to be eaten so it makes a lot of sense and 
you know, it's becoming very, very clear to me. I say, okay, I'm going to try this. So I go fruit and meat for about six months. And this coincided with, you know, my soccer season. So I was playing tons of soccer every single day, running for hours. So the fruit wasn't an issue for me because, you know, I was working so much. Plus I'm, I'm, you know, I was 17 or like maybe just turned 18 at that point. So, it, you know, it wasn't a problem. And I'm eating lots of fruit and lots of fatty meat. And I, I felt great, especially compared, compared to what I was doing before. You know, you're going to feel great. But then I said, and then I started watching you. And then I started watching Barquet and, and Robert and Robert Kiltz. And I say, well, the fruit makes, this makes no sense. Why am I eating fruit? It, it makes zero sense. This fruit is biologically mm-hmm. engineered. It's hybridized, genetically modified. This stuff is not what we would have eaten ancestrally. And even if we did eat fruit ancestrally, it's a few weeks out of the year. So why am I eating the fruit? Get, get rid of the fruit, <laughs> been, been pure meat, and I, I feel better than I ever have before. Awesome, man. Well, uh, how long have you been doing that now? Uh, pure meat? Six months, about. Awesome. How do you feel? Well, I, I feel amazing. Like it, it's really incredible. Uh, just a few things that have happened to me. Um, one is sleep. So I'm sure, I'm sure you experienced this well, you're a testament to this because you work so much, I'm sure. <laughs> and I don't think you could, you could do that if you were eating all the plants, it'd be much more yeah. difficult. It's, it's the same thing for me. I, I can work so long. It's just, it's just, it's just such a sustained level of energy for such a long period of time. And you know, I, uh, I'm faster now. I'm stronger. I'm more calm in in tough situations. You know, I, I just everything in my life has improved so much because of this dietary change. I'm less anxious around people. I can talk to people without feeling nervous. It's it's really had a profound impact on my life. That sort of makes me think um, about how everyone else's lives could be drastically improved if we were to spread this message. And that's what's a, a huge driving factor for me in, in doing this. Yeah. Well, very cool. And um, yeah, and I, well, I, and I, I totally agree with, um, with that, that, <clears throat> you know, I, I've just seen it help so many people. And that, and that's sort of why I started sort of making these just because it was just, I, I couldn't, I couldn't not say anything, you know, yeah. because it was just like, it was just, it was just too obvious and uh, how much it, it helped people. And I, 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 you know, I really wanted to get, you know, more people out there and, uh, you know, talking about it and, uh, and knowing about it. Um, and that's so that, that's really cool. And so how long have you been doing uh, videos yourself? About three months, <clears throat> about three months. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And um, so how, how did you obviously you, you, so you came across, um, you know, uh, Paul Saladino, and you came across mm-hmm. you know, other people such, such as you know, myself and Bart K and others. Um, and then what, what other sort of uh, have you been doing other other research as well? You've been mostly watching videos, or you've been sort of like trying to you know, look online and find studies and 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 sort of ask questions that way as well. Yeah, so I'll tell you how I really started learning about it. In Mm -hmm. English class, we were given an opportunity to write a persuasive essay about a topic of our choosing whatever we wanted. Keep in mind, my English class weren't were in West Los Angeles, half of them Mm -hmm. are vegan, my teacher's a vegetarian. I'm going to write why the carnivore diet is the best way to eat. It's the craziest thing in the world. (laughs) They they didn't, they they couldn't believe it. That's what I did. So I I, I wrote a 50 page essay on why the carnivore diet is optimal for human health. And I really got into every single thing. Uh, yeah, I, I can send it to you after. But yeah. I, yeah, yeah. so I, I figured because there's limited studies that actually, you know, um, take a, a carnivore. There, there are no studies, right? Ran RCTs yeah. for a carnivore diet. So I had to be creative, right? I need to figure out how am I going to prove this? And I proved it, I think. What I did was I said, <laughs> I found a lot of evidence why carbohydrates are bad what they're associated with, the mechanistic, the literature, you know, what carbohydrates do. They increase our blood sugar, high blood sugar manifests as diabetes, advanced glycation end products. You know, it, they're just, it's bad stuff. Carbohydrates do bad things. Okay, that's number one. Ketosis, the benefits of being in ketosis, you know, cycling in and out, but being in ketosis is a good thing. Well, the effects of what the ketones do, RCTs where you take a control, uh, where you take a group of, you know, ketosis, uh, followers and then uh, carbohydrate eaters, and you compare those. Okay, ketosis wins every time. And then I looked at vegetables. Well, are these things good? No, they're not. There's no evidence that antioxidants are good for us. There's no evidence that increased vegetable consumption that is in the context of ancestral eating is going to be good for us. There's no evidence that any of this stuff is good. And there's actually a lot of evidence that the lectins, the oxalates, the phytoestrogens, the glycoalkanoids, the tannins, all this stuff is really, really bad. You, you talk about all the carcinogens and Brussels sprouts, 136 or something. Yeah, like 
99.9% of the dietary pesticides by weight are naturally made in the plant. And I'm just including all this stuff. And then, of course, I got into, you know, fructose, I got into the fruit argument, why fructose is even worse than glucose. I talked about how um, our ancestral, our ancestral, uh, you know, diet, which I think that's the real kicker, you know, the fact that we've been eating meat for probably four and a half million years. That's, that's the real kicker, because you look into nature, they eat their natural diet, they don't get our Western illnesses, they don't get diabetes, heart disease, cancer, any of that stuff. But we do because we've deviated from that. And this makes a lot of sense. So I spent a lot of time talking about why humans are carnivores, you know, things like things like bioenergetics, things like um, omega three metabolism, there's no omega three in plants, it's just ALA, you know, how we're adapted to a high fat diet, things like stomach acidity, that's a good one, you know, we have a really low stomach pH, just the more fault, the morphology of our gut, we we can't get a lot of energy from fiber, chewing, just, um, you know, the age that babies stop consuming breast milk, uh, stone tools, stable nitrogen 15 isotope testing, all this stuff, you know, we're carnivores. And then I get into, you know, also the Randall cycle as Bart K, you know, likes to talk about because we can't con consume carbs and fats concurrently, it causes a huge problem. And I'm just going at this, you know, in a in a way where it's not directly, it's not it's not a direct approach. But if you accept all the premises, then the only conclusion is that meat is good. I talked about how animal foods have every single essential nutrient in their optimal ratios, how plant foods don't have you know, these nutrients in their bioavailable forms, you're missing so much, you're missing the fat soluble vitamins, you're missing amino acids, there's so much stuff that just isn't in plants. And when you add all these things together, including, you know, paleo medicina, and I took a lot of the anecdotes, because plural of anecdote is right, is, mm -hmm. that, 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 that's evidence. And so I'm doing all this stuff, I add all this stuff together, you accept them, you have to accept the premises, because I prove them. And what you're left with is the only way, the only possible human diet that's optimal is carnivore, because everything else is bad. It doesn't work. You can't mix carbs and fats. You can't eat vegetables. They're not good for us. You can't eat carbohydrates, but you can't eat this stuff. It's not good for us. I proved it. So, you know, carnivore is the only way. And then, you know, just for the sake of, of the ethical vegans out there, I got into the whole, um, I got into the whole environmental thing, even though it wasn't necessarily relating to my overall point mm -hmm. it's just very important because the vegans are killing thousands of animals with the salads they eat and we're killing a couple cows a year so you know there's a huge there's a huge uh asymmetry there and you know so that's what yeah. i did and i've nice. sent my essay to lots of people <clears throat> my teacher actually liked it which is cool and yeah so that's uh that's sort of my my prized possession that's that's my my hard work yeah well that's awesome man and that you know that's a huge huge piece of work and uh, yeah, 50 pages, like, Jesus Christ, I hate writing. And like, <laughs> so, like it just sounds, sounds awful. But like, um, yeah, so, so you sent that. So yeah, what would you teach things? He's, he's still a vegetarian or you were able to convert her? Or? Uh, yeah, he's, he's a vegetarian. Couldn't, oh, yeah, uh, Sorry, yeah. Uh, yeah I, I couldn't do it. I've actually had, you know, maybe it's just the, the population of vegetarians and vegans that I'm surrounded by, but I have a really tough uh i have a really you know it's really difficult for me to convince <laughs> vegetarians and vegans to go go carnivore or at least starting start eating more meat just because i think i'm surrounded by a population of people that are so stuck in their ways mm -hmm. and i've been doing this for such a long time it's uh you know it, it's it's tough to see but i have convinced some people mm -hmm. so that's that's pretty cool i i've got a couple you know a couple names that um that have gone carnivore and, yeah. and that's uh that's, that's a good feeling so you got to start lining them up on a plaque. Be like, oh, all, all the ones <laughs> exactly. are converted down. Yeah, all yeah. medals for each person. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I, I, yeah. <clears throat> so your teachers, he, I, I heard uh, vegetarian and English teacher, so I automatically assumed <laughs> you know woman. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's yeah. that's my, my own thing. But like, um, yeah. I mean, I think I think it's, it's very simple. I think it does come down to that, you know. And I mean, there's 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 evidence that exists outside of a randomized controlled trial, and yeah. um, quite good evidence, you know. And um, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we that that's uh, that's why we use parachutes. There's no randomized controlled trials looking at parachutes. You know, that's that's something they teach in you know, first year medical school. They're like, hey guys, don't don't hang your hat on the RCTs. You know, they're like you have to you have to you, you commit this from all different directions. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, so 
He was like, oh, where, where's your RCT and X, Y, and Z? It was like, okay, well, I guess you're not using parachutes anymore. Let's go skydiving. Mm -hmm. Let's see, let's see, let's see what you do on based yeah. on no RCT. And um, you know, but it's it's it it just comes down to the, the fact that meat's good for you, it provides benefit, it has you know, all the nutrients, and that plants are bad and they cause harm. It's just pretty simple, you know. It's just like it you, know, just, yeah. you know, eat the things that's good for you, gives you everything that you need, meat, and don't eat the things that cause harm, plants. And so, you know, for me, that's, 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 that's pretty straightforward. And, and of course, yeah, I mean, I think you outlined things, uh, you know, very well with all the, all the different uh, uh, pieces of evidence that, that all just tie in to the same conclusion. You know, the humans, humans really are carnivores and, and we get a lot of problems when we, we step outside of that. Um, who else did you send it to? Do you try to, to get it published or what you, you should? Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to do some things with it. I, uh, there's a couple people who reached out to me who want to include it in, in like a book that they're writing. I sent mm -hmm. it to a lot of friends, a lot of family. I sent it to a person in my family who deals with trying to come up with a like a cure for cancer. And he's working in the lab all the time trying to trying to solve this thing that's a clear clearly a metabolic problem. And you know that that's just that's just really frustrating to me that he's basing his entire career on something that's just false. Like he's not gonna he's not gonna <laughs> get anything. And 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 he he like he didn't like that when I talked to him about it. I was like my, I was like Michael, like this is not this is not going to work. I mean, you're you're in a lab mixing chemicals, for, trying to figure out the solution to a disease that humans wouldn't get in a natural context. Like, what are you doing? You, I mean, we, we fixed the metabolism. There, there's good evidence showing that cancer is a metabolic disease. Like, I, I've sent this to a lot yeah. of people. Um, the ones that read it don't really have a, a much of a rebuttal, but a lot of times people. Uh, you know, they, they don't, they don't want to read it. They don't like to have their minds open in that way because, you know, a, a lot of these doctors, especially a lot of doctors who have been stuck in their ways for, you know, a certain period of time are really hesitant to accept the, the possibility that something new is better because then they're admitting, they're conceding to the notion that what they did was wrong. And that's an uncomfortable idea because if you, if you admit that carnivore is good, you're saying that your entire career, all the advice that you gave is wrong and it harm people. So they'd rather just brainwash themselves into thinking that what they're doing is right. And I think that's what we see a lot, but um, you know, yeah, it, it, it's pretty sad to see actually. Yeah, no, and, and um, yeah, unfortunately people do have that, you know, their own sort of, you know, you know hubris in that and they don't want to admit yeah. that. There are plenty of, plenty of examples of that. You know, people, people like to say, you know, like Richard Dawkins from Oxford, you know, when he argues about, um, you know, you know, the, you know religion of science and the religion of you know uh, you know theological um you know church uh religion you know he says you know in science you know we say that you know you've disproven me thank you sir i appreciate this you know you you've you've disproven my entire life's work you know i commend you sir you know and he and he talked about this this happened at that uh, you know some some talk at oxford at one time i think that's probably you know he gives that example i think that is probably the one example i mean there there, there um, that does happen but yeah. it's, a lot of people have vested interest in, in their own research. And, uh, you know, that that's where their, you know, their own uh, livelihood comes from their own, their own clout. And they don't want to admit that they've been wrong because they are the authority in the field. And if they say, Oh, Jesus, I've been wrong this whole time. They, they feel that that, that will hurt them. I think it actually uh, would help them. There's a lot of people that have, have been done just that. And, you know, Einstein does it, had did this as well. You know, when he had this theory, he published this thing out and then you go in through experiment, they find something, go, yep, that's wrong, throw it out. And so people mm. knew that he had integrity. So when he really, you know, went saying like, hey, no, I really think this is what it is, you know, people would listen to him. And, um, you know, but they say, you know, science advances one funeral at a time. And that's, uh, that's the case, you know, because you get these, these, these monoliths in a, in a field and, uh, and no one else can go against them and everyone knows they're wrong. And they're just like, yeah, oh, we just got to wait for Dave to die. And then, mm. then we can actually like go and actually get this stuff published. Um, mm. but, uh, you know, you're right though, too, you know, when, when you know, talking about, you know, your, you know, your friend that, um, was, is looking at cancer, you know, if, if you're, if you're looking at something, and you, and you get the diagnosis wrong and you sort of misunderstand, you know, what's causing the problem, you're, you're going to have the wrong solution. Right. Yeah. And, um, you know, so, so like in medicine, it's very important to get the right diagnosis or else you're going to put them on the, you know, have, depending on the, on the issue, maybe it's surgical, maybe it's medical, maybe it's lifestyle changes. Um, mm -hmm. but if you, if you misdiagnose them, you're going to put them on the treatment for something else. And that 
A, isn't addressing the problem, and B, you know, could be that that treatment could in itself in and of itself cause harm. You know, you, you're mm-hmm. giving someone surgery, you do the wrong surgery, and you're like, shit, I just I just carved this person open, and yeah. uh, and they didn't they didn't need it. That's bad, you know. Yeah. And um, and so that's the same thing. You know, when we're when we're looking at these sorts of things, we're saying, oh well, look, you know, we have. I mean, I don't ever thought like, why are these cancer rates just you know tripled in the last forty years? Mm-hmm. You know, why why would that be a thing if that's um, if that's purely genetic? You know, and this is yeah. something we just just have to look at chemically. Um, it's obviously chemical, but it's from from different things besides our genetics. So, you know, if you're looking at it in the wrong way, you're going to get the wrong solutions. And and if we're, you know, we're you know addressing something that's environmental and we're trying to treat that medically, it's, 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 there's going to be a mismatch, and it's not going to be as as effective of a treatment. Which is, you know, why we don't. You know, you have a treatment for cancer. You know, if if we knew what was really going on with cancer, then you know, shouldn't there be like very high success rates with these treatments? But you know, quite yeah. often we we don't have that. You know, some some of them do, like well, you know, some of the leukemias and things like that. You can you can blast those things, get like a ninety three percent, you know, five year survival. But you know, that's uh, that's the exception. That's not the rule. And so mm-hmm. you know, and and then some things will respond to you know, this, this chemo and other, other ones that seemingly look the same don't, obviously there's, there's more going on there. Uh, so yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, I, I, I totally agree because, you know, I think that if we can sort of redefine medicine as, you know, many of, or if we can redefine medicine and come to the conclusion that a lot of these chronic diseases are the product of poor nutrition, if we can establish that, then, I think at that point, we'll start to realize that the solution may lie not in drugs, but in fixing nutrition, right? And that's where, that's where I, uh, you know, I, I have mixed, mixed uh, thoughts about the vegan message, because all these vegans are out there saying that you're going to fix your heart disease, you're going to fix your diabetes, you're going to fix, you know, this problem and that problem with a vegan animal devoid diet. And when I hear that, I think, well, okay, at least they're acknowledging the importance of nutrition. Because when my grandfather, who has multiple myeloma, went to his oncologist and asked him, what should I eat? He said, it doesn't matter. I trust the drugs. So it doesn't matter what you eat. And so I sent him my carnivore essay. And, you know, he's he's trying to eat more meat and he he's trying to eat less carbs. But again, it's it's just hard to, to do that when, you know, you've been told the opposite for so long. And he kind of has some regret or second thoughts in, in his head when he when he eats meat. And I, and I can tell. But, you know, just just circling back. If we can accept the idea that eating proper food will reverse some of these issues, I think that's that's a huge step in the right direction. If we can accept that, you know, if we can look at, at the evidence and see that cancer, you know, heart disease, all these diabetes, all these things coincide so clearly with the addition of sugar, right? And the addition of seed oils and all this stuff. Well, and and it doesn't coincide with saturated fat consumption, then maybe we can sort of start taking the right measures when it comes to fixing these, these issues. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. And, um, you know, it's just like, uh, you know, if you're, you know, like, like I, 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 the analogy I like to make is, you know, like, you know, ancient Rome with lead pipes, you know, they had, they had lead pipes that were getting low grade lead poisoning. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, so if you're getting lead poisoning, you, you could get some, you know, lead poisoning makes you sick, makes you unwell. So you could look at that and say like, well, this is a disease. And you can even check biochemically and look, you know, intracellularly and see like, oh, what's going on here? What are these sort of, you know, these changes that we're seeing and try to find some drugs that like, you know, upsets some of those, you know, uh, pathological functions. And you can spend, you know, billions of dollars doing that and maybe make, you know, tens of billions of dollars treating this. But, you know, at the end of the day, you're, you're, you're not actually addressing the root cause. And so you can do that and you can develop a drug that sort of has you die slowly over 40 years. But, you know, at, at the end of the day, it's just like, you know, you can just remove the, the exposure to the lead and, and have much better results. And, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah I, I, use, I, I use a similar um, thing. You mm-hmm. know, I, I talk about how I have a cashew allergy. Well, okay, that kind of sucks. Well, but when am I going to experience the cashew allergy symptoms? Well, I need to eat cashews. If I don't eat cashews, if I avoid the trigger of the problem, then my throat doesn't close up and I don't die. So, you know, I can live a perfectly normal life. I won't experience the negative impacts of that allergy, 
as long as I don't eat cashews. And it's just, and it, you can tie that into like genetic predispositions where, you know, I've, a, a, you know, a strong line of heart disease in my family. I have grandparents who died at, I think like 50, no, great, grand, great grandparents who died at around 50 with heart attacks. And I say, okay, well, a lot of people would think that, you know, I'm just doomed to have a heart attack, right? Well, that would be if I eat the triggers that are going to lead to the buildup of plaque and, you know, in, in my, behind the arterial walls. Well, I just won't eat carbs then and I, and I won't get the get the issue. Like, it's so simple. It, 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 I mean, the, the, the predispositions exist, but you need the triggers to sort of initiate them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and that's a, that's a fantastic, uh, you know, a point with the cashew allergies, you know, it's yeah. just like, you know, it's just like, well, I mean, I'm, what are you, you going to do? You have to eat cashews, you know? So I guess you're just going to have to take, you know, take adrenaline every day. I mean, that's just what you have to do. I mean, yeah. you can't just stop eating cashews, you know? <laughs> just another another example of plants trying to kill you, you know? Right. And um, like, um, oh, what was I going to say too? Yeah, the, um, the uh, you know, the whole idea of, of plants being toxic, this mm -hmm. is not new. You know, this is something that we we have known about, you know, since the dawn of time, you know, we have, I, I mean, any, so since the written word, there have been, you know, writings about, you know, different talk. I mean, we have, you know, Socrates, you know, died from, you know, they, you know, they killed him by having him drink hemlock, you know, this is, this is, this is a well-established, you know, uh, phenomenon that, you know, certain plants will kill you and, and cause harm. You know, we, we've known about nightshades being toxic. God yeah. knows how many, you know, hundreds of years, if not thousands of years. And, and yet, you know, we, we've, we've sort of gone back for, backwards from that and convinced ourselves that no, 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 actually plants are really good. This is, we, we live in the Garden of Eden. They didn't, you know, I thought you knew, you know, that just like every plant here was put here by, by God. And, and so that we can just, uh, you know, and, and just, you know, eat our fill and, and get everything. But of course, that's not the case. And people, people get very, um, you know, they, they, they get very taken aback by that concept. But this is this is this is very well established. You know, it's like you know any introductory botany book will tell you this book on horticultures mm -hmm. and things and things like that will all tell you this. And yeah. so you know, I mean, there's tons of books that just tell you about how to identify plants that won't kill you. You know, and so what does that mean? <laughs> that means that all right. the other plants will kill you. You mm -hmm. know, so and 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 you know you know what I like I, I've I've looked at that as well. And I think what a really clear marker for like what we're saying is true is, is that you try to feed a baby like a raw piece of broccoli, it's going to spit it out. I mean, when I was a baby, you know, my parents who were really trying to be healthy, low fat, everything, tried to feed me ground up vegetables and all that stuff. And I would and I would put it in my mouth and I'd grab it and I'd throw it because I didn't want to eat it. And you see this now, I, you know, you see all these videos of parents trying to figure out how how to get their babies to eat and online, you know. All these videos of like, recommending how to get your child to eat well i mean babies are like babies are biological creatures they they know that they need food it's just you're feeding them the the food that they know are toxic and babies aren't yet brainwashed they haven't yet internalized you know the the, the societal message that eating plants are the best thing for your health right they don't know that all they're, that they're trusting is their biological innate natural instinct mm -hmm. that tells them that what you're putting on their plate is poison and, you know, I think that's such a clear marker because you feed a child meat, they're going to eat it. Like mm -hmm. the, I, I, I can guarantee they're going to eat it. You know, when I, so when I was a baby, right, my parents didn't really feed me much animal food. So I'd go over to my grandma's house sometimes, you know, this is like for the first few years of my life. And, you know, the older people, you know, they, they tend to have some wisdom and they, they, there aren't too many old vegans that I know. A lot of the grandparents, you know, they're, they're cooking bacon and eggs for breakfast. And, you know, that's what my grandma, that's what my grandma does. She loves fat, loves animal foods. She's very healthy too. So she would cook me some, some chicken soup, you know, every, every time I went over and, you know, I just wouldn't stop eating the chicken. Cause I like, I, I was so deprived of it. I was just constantly eating the chicken. You know, she'd try to throw a carrot in there. No, I, I wouldn't take that. It would just be the, the chicken and the, and the chicken skin. Sometimes there'd be some bee for some salmon too. And I just remember I would constantly be getting more and, and, and you know, and, and this makes so much sense. We want animal foods as babies. We don't want vegetables. Mm -hmm. we know yeah. we know from very early on yeah absolutely yeah and no, no, i think that that's um you know very good uh, marker as well you know because yeah you, you're you, like you were saying you know they, they haven't been brainwashed you know and and, and so they're, they're more at their genetic roots whereas like you know like deer don't go around eating like the shitty tasting leaves you know yeah. and they don't have like health coaches going oh, no, no no you you have to eat that one like that one that one's a great for you all these sorts of things you know they, they eat what tastes good 
you know i don't know if you've ever seen a, like a like a, a video of like a cow eating grass like they they love their eyes just bugging oh, out yeah. like, give me this you know they just like they're just yeah. voraciously eating this stuff and um you know and that's and you know like a lion eating gazelle or e- eating that cow you know mm-hmm. it's then um you know they they really enjoy it there was it was actually funny there was one uh video i saw it was like in in uh, like some sort of you know uh, preserve or whatever and uh, they had a couple you know big male lions mm-hmm. and they and they made this massive pile of like chicken legs and thighs i mean it was like seriously it was like four feet tall mound yeah. of these these chicken parts and uh, the lions came out and they were just they were so excited oh, oh, you know, running around and then this big one like jumped on the top of the pile and just like oh, just like covered it he's like oh, and the other lions that come in he's like no 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 it's mine you know yeah. and, uh, it was absolutely hilarious, you know, but that's just like, they, they love this stuff. And yeah. so, you know, it doesn't really follow that, you know, we would, we would have evolved to hate the taste of something that, that was good for us. You know, you exactly. might have an outlier exactly. like sugar, but, but that tastes good, but that doesn't mean that it is good. Right. Yeah. Um, it just means it's a safe, quick hit of energy right now. That'll get you through your, your lean times. But if it tastes yeah. bad, it's bad. It's bad. Yeah. Yeah. hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, that, that, that's the thing, you know, uh, you know and, that was the thing, you know, um, Dr. Gundry, who I, I, it's, it's, he wrote, he wrote the book, The Plant Paradox. I think the man himself yeah. is a paradox because he wrote this entire book <laughs> about how toxic plants are and then tells you that you need to eat like raw food vegan. It's like, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what went, what went wrong with, with Gundry. Like mm-hmm. I, I've been trying to conceptualize this because, you know, I heard you talking about him and, it it just it's kind of hard to fathom you know he he knows that plants are trying to defend themselves with these toxins why would we eat them i i just don't get what's going through his head i, I wish i wish i could talk to him i wish you could talk to him and, and understand what's going on there because it doesn't make sense yeah for, from what i understand it's a religious perspective so he's a seventh day okay. Adventist. yeah right okay yeah and so so, so 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 they eat a lot of dairy i guess do they i, I don't know yeah. what the hell they eat but uh yeah they um but you know that that's you know so he's got he's got his sort of brainwashing from a different direction as well yeah yeah and which is funny you know because like he's you know that is a paradox you know he's talking about how toxic plants are and then he's like no 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 but you, you still have to eat plants you know like <laughs> what did we just talk about what what does your whole book talk about and yeah. Uh, but yeah so um, yeah that's the whole thing with the Seventh Day Adventists is that you know they 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 thought that like lust and things like that were bad these are these are one of the seven deadly sins and they found that people you know were eating meat that um they were more lustful and they were they wanted to procreate more funny enough that this is how our <laughs> biology works you know being yeah. healthy and having hormonally active you know it's just like that's that's just going to be an urge yeah, and so they found thought, that, right yeah and they found that people were going vegan plant-based they uh they were able to suppress that oh these these lustful urges they go away that must be the right way that must be the the pious good uh way and um uh so they, they they started doing that and they started um you know arguing that this was this was the most healthy way and that's the thing too loma linda um like loma linda medical school uh, i think that's like west la or something like that anyway it's down it's down in the la area it mm-hmm. um they're like seventh day adventist hospital and medical school and um and they so they put out a lot of of uh studies that really argue for the um like a, a vegan plant-based sort of diet but it's 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 as bad as industry research you know what i mean like it's i'm going to believe you know you you should you know suspect their their research as much as you should suspect you know research coming out from coca-cola saying that you know that you know their product isn't bad for you you know like it's like they've they have a bias you know and, yeah. and unfortunately um Gundry has that bias, whether he realizes it or not, whether that's a conscious bias or not. Um, he's, uh, he seems to be a part of that. Now I haven't, I haven't spoken to him myself, but, um, it, it does seem like that. I, I think, I think hopefully get him one day, you know, because he, he knows he's right there. He's on that. He's on the precipice, He's close, you know? Yeah. And, um, but, uh, yeah, it doesn't quite got him there, but you, you keep going, um, as far as you're, you're debating vegans, because, you know, I think that, um, trying to get one of these these guys to read a 50 page uh essay might be a difficult task um yeah. but you know but when you you're going back and forth and you and you you clearly if you can write a 50 page paper on this then you know, you know what you're talking about um 
they they'll say, well, what about this and what about this? And, and you'll have answers for them and you'll be able to just fire right back. You'll find that, you know, eventually you'll start being able to figure out how to how to talk to people and talk them into that. I've I've been fortunate in that. Like I, I still have a like hundred percent kill rate on on yeah. converting vegans. It's awesome. And uh it's it's, it's uh it's funny and you and, and, and doctors and researchers and and nutritionists as well, if they'll engage. You know, that's the mm -hmm. caveat. Not everyone will engage. But even when they do, even with their, if they're engaging in a in sort of an aggressive, like you know, you're wrong and here's how, if it, at least they'll listen to the the response, you know, you, you can you can get them because at least at least they're you know taking part in the yeah. discussion. Yeah. Well, so I'm I'm going to UCLA. I'm I'm an incoming freshman, and I had to figure out something with the meal plan. So you know, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not going to eat like the the garbage stuff that yeah. that they have there. So I talked to the nutritionist, um, got in a call with her. And I wanted to try to just get them to do meat. You know, they they have some eggs, they have like hard boiled eggs, they have bacon. But I was gonna see if they can cook their their meat just in something besides canola oil, so the or just in butter. You know, I was gonna try to find some options, and I didn't go into it with hopes of necessarily come, you know, having a debate. But that's what it turned into because she was so offended by the idea that I was eating <laughs> only meat. I mean, she she like. It was like she was having a heart attack. I mean, she yeah. she was she couldn't believe it, and she, she's like, "So so why do you eat only meat?" And and I explain, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, so I I explain it, and you know, we're just going point for point, and I say, if you can name one thing that's essential that meat doesn't have, like I'll, I will I will go vegetarian. Like I'll do whatever you <laughs> you, you want me to do, <laughs> and 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 you know, she says fiber. And she, she says fiber. And I was like, okay, well, why am I even engaging in this at this point? I mean, she's, yeah. this woman went to school for eight years to tell me that fiber is an essential nutrient. I yeah, mean, it's, yeah. it's a, it's a, it was, it was the craziest thing in the world. And then we're going back and forth and she's talking about blue zones and she doesn't know what she's talking about. She thinks that the Okinawans don't eat pork and she thinks that the Mediterranean diet isn't revolving around meat. And she thinks that, you know, and I've been told her that the, in the low Melinda study that, which I looked at, the population of people that did the best are the ones who ate the most animal food, right? It's it's a, like literally a, a, a direct correlation. If you re actually read the study, she said, well, you know, I was a, I was a head nutrition advisor at Kaiser and I did this for so long and I read the studies and you don't know what you're talking about. And think about how many people you hurt during that time. If you got it this wrong. Yeah, I yeah. know. <laughs> and yeah. So, you know, we're, we're continually continuing to go back and forth and she says, well, well, what's wrong with vegetables? I mean, vegetables are so great. And I said, well, vegetables are, you know, they're trying to kill you. And I explain why she says, but they have a lot of good things too. And, you know, it's just, it was just so much ignorance in the conversation, everything, anything that vegetables have that we need is, is in meat and you get it without all the toxins. And I'm, you know, I'm trying to have this conversation uh, to no avail, unfortunately. So I'm going to have to figure something out, maybe just opt out of the meal plan or something, or maybe, maybe go with the lawsuit or, you know, you know we'll see. Yeah. But um, yeah, so, you know, that, that's a, that's, that's my predicament at the moment. Well, it could be, you know, it might take like a, you know, like a highly publicized lawsuit to like actually like get this, get this in the main stage and just be like, yeah, okay, that'd be awesome. you know, yeah, that would be, that would be kind of funny. Um, yeah, I think, I think you're, you, you may be a bit behind the eight ball just because, you know, you are younger and, and you, you know, haven't, you know, you don't have the letters behind your name and things like that. Um, it, it, it helps and it doesn't, um, you know, some people like, you know, they'll, you'll find out you know, what I do. And they'll just be like, I can't believe you're a doctor. What the hell is going on? I mean, they'll just get offended, you know, that I'm mm -hmm. saying these sorts of things. But, it, you know, at the, end, at, at the end of the day, you know, I have been doing this for a long time. And, um, you know, I have, and I, and I you know, and, uh, and I have sort of studied this at a, at a professional level. And so, mm -hmm. you know, some, some, you know, it does, it does carry a bit of weight. And when you're in a consultation with someone, and you're talking to them, it's like, wow, my doctor told me this, you know, like, mm -hmm. You know, it actually does help uh, in uh, in in, in um, just having a bit of, a bit of weight. So, like, you know, unfortunately, you're you're sort of behind the eight ball. But yeah, at the same time, definitely. it'll 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 help you because you 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 will have to work harder, and so you'll have to like hone your 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 arguments and um and and really be on top of the facts and really be on top of the of the discussion, because otherwise they're not going to give it to you. You know, they're not going to give you any any uh, freebies. You know, so I think it's probably. Yeah good in, in that sense as well yeah i mean it definitely forces me to know you know because a lot of the doctors and even my own personal doctor that i go to i, I thought it'd be funny if i asked him uh, what cholesterol is because i had to get you know my my blood done my parents wanted to make sure i wasn't dying or anything 
so we got the blood done and it was totally fine just high ldl which is you know you would expect yeah. and um so so he said oh you know you you're, this is this is fantastic except your ldl is a bit high and i said you know can you tell me you know what, what cholesterol is because you know i wanted to see if he knew and of course he didn't know so he he didn't realize that ldl the, the thing that's distributing the cholesterol to to all the tissues in the body which is cholesterol is so important i mean it's a precursor to our sex hormones it's it makes up all the cell membranes it helps us synthesize vitamin d i mean it's this stuff is really really good and he didn't realize that the thing that moves it around is is also really good <laughs> so you know again doctors have this ability to sort of circumvent learning the knowledge because they have the they have the the letters and um, yeah. so, yeah, I mean, on one hand, you know, it's definitely true. I, I need to know what I'm talking about or else I will be just dismissed that much faster. If yeah. I don't know what I'm talking about, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm done. Finished. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, you, and you're right there, too. You know, um, you know, doctors can can. Well, I, I think anyone who's who's you know very educated and, and knowledgeable in, in certain areas they can fool themselves into thinking that they're knowledgeable about all areas. And, yeah. and, and, but it is a bit concerning that, you know, doctors aren't as, as knowledgeable about their own damn field, you know, and, um, and, uh, you know, so, but because they're a doctor, well, obviously I'm an actual, obviously I know what it is and they can convince themselves. as so, well, obviously I know what this is. You know, I'm a doctor. I've been doing this for 30 years you know, yeah. and, uh, and then, you know, um, and it takes, you know, someone, you know, an 18 year old who's never gone to medical school to like point out that like, you actually don't know what you're talking about. And, yeah. um, you yeah, know, that's, that's hard for people to hear. And, um, but you know, there, there are, there are good, good, uh, doctors out there who actually are actually interested in, in finding out new knowledge. And I think that, I think it comes from, Certain certain levels, like um, sort of new doctors coming in, I find are mm -hmm. quite receptive to this because they're just they're just sponges for information. They're just they, they want to like sort of learn everything, and they're yeah. like, oh wow, that's that's really interesting. And then, and then sort of like you know, doctors have like a lot more experience, you know, because they've seen a lot of things get turned over. You know, they've seen a lot of things that they've learned in medical school, learned in their residency, that then show them like, oh, actually, no, this is this is the wrong wrong thing to do, and this is this is actually better. And so they've mm -hmm. seen that enough times to know that it can happen, and it can happen in, in pretty revolutionary ways. And um, as uh, as one of the professors of neurosurgery here was talking about, there's a different, you know, there's when 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 you know our ideas and understanding of medicine change they can be an evolutionary change it's just our understanding sort of develops and we grow and change with that or they can be revolutionary you completely sure. change directions you know and um and so when you've seen enough revolutions and like you know he was talking about specific about you know clipping aneurysm so like you know taking off a chunk of the skull going in there putting a clip outside of an aneurysm on, on a blood vessel on an on an artery and uh, and stopping it that way versus now we go through um you know endovascularly and put a bunch of coils and, and like stop it up from the inside that was revolutionary and and you see a lot of friction see a lot of people have their entire careers revolved around this and like, what the hell are you doing? Absolutely not. And, yeah. um, and so there's a big, there's a big fight. There's a big fight about what you do, you clipping versus coiling. And now the answer is obvious. You, you know, coiling is uh, for, for by and large for most aneurysms is by far and away the right way to go. There's still, so still an argument in, in some like for like MCA aneurysms, but um there, there really isn't isn't an argument for for other ones and um and so you know he was saying like looking back it's very obvious that this was this was a benefit you know to be be able to do this uh but it it, it takes sort of a revolution to to get that so right now i think we're you know starting that way and so you you talk to a doctor yeah. about that it, it it is revolutionary to them and so if if the doctor sort of seen enough of those revolutions happen and realize it like looking back, you're like, yeah, like what, what were we really arguing about in the first place? This is very obvious. They're going to be much more open-minded to, you know, these new revolutionary ideas that, that could be uh, very different from what they, they think. So I, I find that those guys are pretty receptive as well. And yeah. um, if they give a shit at all, I mean, some people don't, <laughs> some people just don't yeah. care, you know, they've got yeah. other things on their, on their plate, but uh, and then there's some that are like, they're really focused on their exams and they're just like, they're like, no, this is what it is. And like, mm -hmm. it was in the book. So that's what it is. And because they're, that's, that's all that matters to them is, is being able to, 
um, you know, you know, replicate the, the information out of a book so that they can pass this test and become, you know, uh, uh, you know, an attending. So for them, it's just like, if it's in the book, that's gospel, you know? And so they, mm, sometimes yeah. they get, they get sort of stuck in that, but not all of them, but I see some yeah. of the ones like do that. Yeah. It's interesting that you bring that up because, you know, that's what I really noticed with the people around me, especially my English class, you know, we were learning different theories and we learned Marxist theory at one point. And then, all, all, you know, suddenly everyone turns into a Marxist because we, we, we learned the theory and, you know, they just sort of internalized the theory because my teacher was endorsing it to a degree. And all of a sudden, everyone's a Marxist. But yeah, so, so you know, but kind of going back to what you're saying when it comes to who's able, whose mind is able to be changed and whose isn't, it kind of, it's, I've had that thought about, you know, carnivore and how's the change going to be made? Because, you know, there, there are these different levels of, of influence. And the ones at the top are, of course, you know, the big industry, the companies with money. And then as you get lower, you know, you get into, you know, smaller groups, but there's a larger number of people. And when I think about carnivore, I think about it as something that can only be changed from the bottom up rather than the top down. So it's going to take a lot of a lot of us on the bottom, you know, so, sort of pushing our way to the top until the big, you know, the big people with the big influence are overthrown and they're replaced by the farmers, hopefully, you know, so I think uh, it's going to it's going to take us at the bottom, if you will, to, to to force us to the top. And then, you know, everyone knows about it and everyone does this to improve their health. Yeah. Well, yeah, you're right. I mean, it has to start with the grassroots movements, you know, or else it's, it's not going to, it's not going to get the track. Yeah. It's not going to, it's not going to come from the the overlords, you know, and, and you, you can look back to, I mean, there, there are examples of, of um, different, different oppressive governments that have, um, you know, limited the supply of meat and, you know, made people have, you know, eat, you know, grains and things like that. You know, the British did it in India, I believe they did it to Ireland as well. And then, and there's other examples also, and this, you know, just keeps you, keeps you weak. You know, and it keeps you, you know, yeah, weak and controllable. Yeah. yeah, totally, totally does. I mean, that's that, you, you, all you have to do is look through history. And you know, I, I did a video on this. You know, it's it's paradoxical how you know I'm Beverly Hills is is like a couple miles from from my neighborhood, like one of the richest places in the world. And you know, I, I used to have friends around there, and you look in their fridges, and they're eating oatmeal for breakfast. You know, these are the richest of the rich, and they're intentionally eating slave food. You know, it's a, it's a, it's it's so <laughs> ironic, you know, because if, if if this happened in in the you know, 1300s or like in medieval times, they would think you're crazy. Why would you, if you're rich, why are you eating the slave food? Why are you eating the grains? You should be eating meat. And you know, throughout history, th this is what you're seeing over and over again, and it makes a lot of sense because the people who are malnourished are unable to reproduce. Typically, that they're infertile. It's times mm -hmm. of deprivation. This is what this is the effect that eating grains and plants and you know being and you know adopting a diet that's destitute of animal foods is going to do to you 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 can't reproduce we see it now and you know so yeah it, it, i mean th this concept of meat is king and grains are you know for the weak is pretty consistent throughout all of our evolutionary history yeah at least in the in the in the neolithic yeah 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 certainly and um you know the uh like the, you know like, like to your point you know when people previously you know they 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 absolutely understood the importance of meat and um, this is what the whole spice trade was because we didn't have refrigeration so meat would spoil but you needed this and so you need you kill an animal you would eat this over a prolonged period of time which is why our stomach acid is so low um or, or our stomach yeah. ph is so low um yeah. and so you had to use these spices to sort of preserve them or cover up the taste of, of rotting meat and uh, so that you could eat because you needed that nutrition and mm -hmm. and this was this was a long understood concept that wealthier people were healthier lived longer better teeth taller and and um and had other sorts of you know uh, uh, health benefits what, what what were they able to do they were able to afford meat and that's why it was called rich yeah. food fatty food was rich food now that's right. that, that's a derogatory that's term it's like oh it's rich oh my goodness it's too rich that's i don't like it you know but that, that before that was that was rich food like oh wow that, that's really rich food that was a good thing. That was a positive thing. You know, you had to be rich to eat like this regularly. And, uh, and that concept was, um, was not foreign up until very recently. And, mm -hmm. um, and I think that was, that was, uh, directly due to the fact that they, they had meat and, uh, others didn't really. Yeah. I, I think that makes a lot of sense. And also you brought up the teeth and the height. I mean, if, if there's, that, that's also such strong evidence. I mean, 
we're we're like six three before in the in the Paleolithic, and now we're five nine, or in the United States. Yeah. And you know, our, our our teeth were perfect. You know, mm-hmm. we didn't have to have our wisdom teeth taken out. Yeah. Like like all these things, they just add up to make. And you know, you look at the bigger picture. Humans are supposed to be eating meat to live a long time. And I love the the other um, you know, hi- historical stories that you bring into it. Like you, you talk about the king of Ethiopia and the and the persian king and you know we're living to 120 or whatever and you're living to 70 and you know and then then the native americans who are the chiefs are living to like 120 those of a Maasai woman lived at 122 i mean the meat eaters are thriving Mm -hmm. and the the grain eaters are really not thriving at all yeah and that that was the thing too you know like the game changers um you know propaganda hit piece like uh, it was really just a commercial. It was just commercial to sell, uh, you know, vegan protein, uh, which is what you yeah. know, James Cameron is is hawking at the time. You know, they talk about like the um, you know the the Roman gladiators and how they were they were called the grain eaters. They, they would call them that, uh, and they were like, oh, these are the biggest badasses ever. And it's like, dude, I think I think you watch too many movies. You know, mm-hmm. like the movie Gladiator and Spartacus, like that, that wasn't actually clear, the, you know, clear de- depiction of what life was like then, and uh, and what these people were like. Um, I actually, I actually knew about that beforehand because I just, I just, you know, I like that, that era and I like, like studying the classics and things like that. And, um, they, they ate grains specifically to fatten up so that they would have more, uh, adipose tissue and visceral fat because that was protection. So they got slashed Mm. or stabbed, you know, if you got, you know, several inches of fat in there, you know, and you just sort of got like a two inch cut you're fine, you know? So it was, yeah. if you're, if you're very lean, you get that two inches stab in there, like you're hitting, you're hitting an organ. And so that was, that was actually, that was, that was um, a defense mechanism was getting fat. They wanted, they ate grains to get fat. So yes, they did eat a lot of grains. And the reason was to not get ripped. It was to get huh. fat. And uh, yeah. that's not something that uh, they told you, but that's, that is the his, uh, history on. Yeah. I mean, isn't it crazy how people think that we're getting smarter we're becoming geniuses inventing the, the most amazing things in the world and yet we become so incredibly stupid and ignorant mm-hmm. at the same time it's it's such a strange idea to think about i mean yeah. the, just, just just what you mentioned i mean they knew that meat was good and that grains would make them fat i mean they they had the common sense to figure this out and now you know we're you know we're, we're in the midst of making flying cars and going to mars but we haven't realized that but but we have 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 it completely misconstrued the way that we're supposed to eat like it's, it's such a it's such a strange idea to think about yeah well that's the thing too you know there's the, that, that idea of being so smart you'll cut yourself you mm, know yeah and you just just overthinking oh well if you think about this and you can make a lot of you know really really good arguments for this um but at the end of the day you know it, it's wrong i mean there's like that um who was it I forget which which um which which Greek philosopher it was, but it was one where where he was arguing that you know you had a, a like a, a turtle, you know if you shot a, if you shot an arrow at a turtle, it could never hit it logically, and he proved that logically, right? And it's like well the turtle's moving, it, it, a turtle in motion, so a turtle in motion, and you shoot an arrow at it, so even though the arrow is moving very fast, the turtle's also moving. And so once that arrow moves half the halfway, uh, you know, the distance between, uh, you know, um, you and the turtle, the turtle has actually moved. So now that's further. And so when it's gone halfway between, you know, there and there, it's moved again. It's just a little again. And so, and so he he made a very, you know, compelling logical argument for that this could never reach it because it was always moving. So this half was always, always changing, is always growing. And, um, you know, that was, it was an author, Terry Pratchett, you know, sort of used that in one of his, his satirical books and, uh, and said like, obviously this crap is because, you know, people, you know, always like common sense over logic. And it's like, well, of course it's going to hit the damn turtle. And like, I've seen it happen. And so that's the thing, you know, you, you can make these very compelling arguments that, that, you know, make sense in a lot of ways, but of course we're just complete rubbish. And, uh, and that's, and that's what we've been doing now. And, um, you know, and the thing is too, is that, you know, we, we, we think that we're smarter, we, we are not, you know, we, we are, it's, it's the classical standing on the shoulders of giants. You know, the only, you know, like, I, I believe it was Newton said that, you know, the only reason I can see so far is because I'm, I, I stood on the shoulder of giants that came before me. You know, he was mm. working on other people's, uh, okay. uh, you know, working on other people's work and, and, their, and their publications. And because of that, he was able to build on that. And, that, and that's mm. what we're doing. 
you know, people have just incrementally built up. And this is, this is why we're so successful is because we've been able to pass down knowledge generationally and we can look back 4,000 years and, and read, you know, Gilgamesh and, you know, read Sophocles. And, and, uh, and, we, and we know that like the work of Archimedes, you know, he made, the, he made a goddamn steam engine, you know, <laughs> thousands of years ago. And that, that still pisses me off. Like he was, um, they basically like, were just like, just basically supporting this guy. Like you just do your thing. City's going to support you. You just, you just, just work and invent things like, because you're awesome. And then it was like a Roman soldier came in and I like, told him to stop working. He's like, yeah, yeah, you know, get bent. And the guy's just like, right, bang, just stabbed him. Like, yeah, you do what you're told or you die. And they killed this guy, this mega genius of, of like just astronomical proportions had a goddamn steam engine i mean you imagine like having the industrial revolution two thousand years early oh my god yeah. we'd, we'd be, probably, i mean maybe, maybe we'd be dead maybe by now but well it could be yeah. yeah but like i mean i mean it'd be star trek right i mean star trek's like you know 2600 or whatever that's when it's yeah. like set yeah. you know so this would this would be equivalent of like you know 3600 or more really you know like you know 4200 yeah. And, and that's how much, that's how much we would have advanced in that time. But, you know, but that's the thing, you know, we, we are, we are learning from other people, you know, how the whole Renaissance came from just rediscovering things that people already knew about, you know, 1500, 2000 years earlier, mm -hmm. and, um, and sort of rediscovering that, and sort of learning on it. And, and you know, all, all, and most of the books, and most of the writings of that time are gone, you know, like Sophocles, we only have seven of his plays. But we know from from other writings that he wrote something like over 170, wow. you know, and like there was a competition every year in in uh, in Greece where um, or, or Athens or, or whatever, and um, where it was just you know you you write plays and they 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 write this like sort of like three plays and and that would be your your package set and they sort of vote on who would get it. He won that competition. It was a yearly competition. He won that something like 29 times, you mm -hmm. know. And so um, that's, that's amazing, right? And we only have seven of these damn things, you know, but they're amazing. And that's, and that's where we get, you know, like Oedipus Rex and uh, Ajax and, um, and other, other of these very, very famous, um, you know, stories. And, mm -hmm. you know, now we're, we're, you know, it took, you know, people were learning in the Renaissance, what these guys knew 2000 years earlier. And so, you know, it would, that's a really sort of curtailed advancement, but that's the thing you, you, you have to build on these other people. And then exactly, you know, we, we get, you know, so sharp, we'll cut ourselves and we, and we overthink things and we just, it just, it just doesn't work out well. Um, and, uh, and no, I don't, I don't think we were smarter. Uh, the people, we, we have a lot, we have a lot of technology. We have a lot of things out there and we have a lot of people thinking all the time and doing things and being productive, but it actually allows us to be a lot dumber you know, because, yeah. like, you know, when they didn't have to, point. you know, when, when we didn't have all this technology, you had to do a lot more with a lot less. And, um, you know, I, I there's, a, there's um, sort of a, a record of when the written word was, was first discovered, or it was first, you know, thought up in ancient Greece, there were a lot of people that were saying, this is a bad idea. This, this is going to ruin things like you, we shouldn't be writing things down because that will ruin our memories. Like right now you have to have a perfect memory. These, these guys all had like eidetic memories, like they, they had perfect memories. And so they were like, this is, this is we, you, you can't do that because they had to, they had to have perfect memories. I mean, think about the Iliad and the Odyssey. This was, this was like, you know, I think it was like hex, uh, hex, uh, hex, uh, anyway, I forget the, I forget the metric uh, of the verse, but um, this was a very complex poem, very, very sophisticated, um, you know, uh, poetic composition. And it's thousands of pages long, you know, the Iliad and the Odyssey. So they're each hundreds of pages. And um, so maybe not thousands. And, um, and so they, they were oral tradition. These were, these were passed down orally. So you, you, had to, you had to be able to be word perfect in extremely complex uh, you know, extremely comp linguistically complex uh, verse for, for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pages. That's the only reason that it exists. And then eventually someone said, okay, let's, let's write it down. Um, so they had, they had brilliant memories and they argue that if we write things down, we won't have to, we won't have to remember things. You know, I was sort of, you know, in my, in my teens um, when cell phones became pretty widespread and, yeah. um, and then I got, you know, I got my cell phone, my first cell phone when I was like, 
I think like, you know, 19 or like 20 or something like that. Um, before that, I had about 150 phone numbers in my head <laughs> at all times, you know, because I needed to know all of my friends' numbers and my you know, family and all these sorts of things. And, and wow. every now and then I'd just be like, I have all these things. Are they going to stay there? Like, that would be bad. I, I, I do need to call these people. And, uh, and so I, every now and then I just write them down and see them out. You know, there was always around like 140, 150 phone numbers of all these different people. And and I, I had friends that would do that too. Every now and then you just see them just writing out names and numbers. And it's just like, yeah, you know, just sort of just make sure I don't forget these things. And uh, I can't, I can't tell you, hey, I can remember my, my phone number from when I was a kid and from, uh, you know, growing up and um, my number now, because I give that thing out and uh, that's pretty much it. I, I don't, I don't really know any, any other phone numbers because I don't need to, Yeah, you know? Yeah. I mean, it sounds like, so we didn't get smarter, but we definitely got a lot more and we just did the wrong thing with it. I mean, that, yeah. that, that, I guess, I guess that's what it really comes down to. Well, it's like that movie Idiocracy. Uh, have you ever seen that? No, I haven't. Look it up, man. It's 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 less it's more prophecy than comedy, and um, it's just basically the dumbing down of of society and just how you know stupid we're all getting. And, What's it called? Uh, Idiocracy. Idiocracy. Okay. Yeah, it's it's funny, but it's uh it's actually now it, it's like more. Uh, more like actually concerning like oh my god no this is this is way too close way too close though yeah. and uh but that's it you know you're you you know we're we're sort of moving in a direction where you don't have to be as intelligent we have access to all this information but you know you know we don't actually you know technically need it most people don't mm. and uh, and and we're making life so convenient to seriously hinder ourselves you know yeah. and so it's um you know, so people, they, they don't have to do as much. And so they don't, you know, they don't, they don't have to, to work as hard. They don't have to, um, you know, figure these things out and live because they're, they're, everyone's living pretty blessed lives, at least in, in the Western countries, you know, you go to, go to Bangladesh. It's not the same, it's not the same thing, mm. you know, yeah. go to, go to Sierra I mean, Leone, you know, uh, Very different yeah, I mean, yeah, you're honestly, I mean, the, the ease at which we can evade conflict and just get out of tough situations is, is so problematic and it's so dangerous because it's so inconsistent with our past. I mean, if you're sad, you know, I, there was, there was one point where I suffered a really, really bad ankle injury um, in the middle of my like senior year season. And I, I was really upset about it. So I talked to someone and uh, what they said was, you know, this is a time where you need to just relax, take care of yourself, you know, go, go sit down and watch some Netflix and eat some ice cream. And then I, I, I left that and I was like, no, like, like hell no, like this is crazy. I got out, you know, I started doing sprints. I, I started, you know, like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be like a, I'm not going to be a little bitch. I'm just going to go and, <laughs> and, and I, I'm going to go do it. I'm just going to go work. Like I, that hearing this, this like a feminine man who was like really fat, just telling me, yeah, you know, just go, go sit down and, and eat the ice cream and wa yeah. watch some Netflix. It just lit this fire in me that made me want to go, yeah. go out and, and go out and be crazy. And that's, I mean, this yeah. is what you see people people can avoid the hardships in their lives by just going to, uh, you know, easy conveniences that are really, really tr actually a problem. Yeah. And it's, it's funny, the guy's saying that, you know, it's just like, Oh, Hey, just, you know, give up on life. Like I did, you know, it's fine. You know, like, yeah, it's, you know, it's yeah. great being fat, you know, like yeah. Yeah, ice cream's totally worth it, you know? And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's just like, yeah, screw your dreams. Just, you know, just give up now. No, it's great. And, uh, yeah. No, that's, that's, that's terrible advice. <laughs> I'm yeah, glad you didn't listen to that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and sometimes you need that, you know, sometimes you need to, you need to be given, you know, the, the wrong message and the wrong example for you to then look at that and be like, absolutely not. I'm not doing that mm -hmm. shit. And, um, you know, you have people that have, uh, you know, a difficult childhood and, you know, and, and, um, you know, I see their parents and they're, and have a, a dysfunctional relationship or you have parents that have a wonderful relationship and you can, you can get very useful information out of both of those. And I thankfully had, you know, parents that had a wonderful relationship. And so I got out of that, but, you know, my dad, he came from that, his, his parents had, um, you know, from, from what I understand, a very good relationship. And he, and he took very positive things from that. And my mom, uh, you know, her parents, you know, did not have a very, very good relationship and they ended in divorce. And, and she looked at that and said, I am never doing that. I am never doing that um, in my marriage. And I'm never going to allow, you know, do this to my subject, my kids to this and things like that. So you can, you can definitely get it. 
And so, yeah, thankfully you went, you went the right direction in that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so how does this affect you? Um, you know, like, you know, you know, with, with other people your age and when you're going out and like socially, you know, because a lot of people, you know, they get very concerned about going carnivore because they think, well, what am I going to do when I go out and I go to dinner or when I go, you know, drinks or I'm around other people? I mean, what, what do I do with like, you know, the, you know, just the, the, the social pressure of conforming to the norm? Like, how do you, how, how, how has that affected you? Have you noticed that really any problem with that? Yeah. So uh, like for me, it's, it's the alcohol, like that, that's a big one because mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm with a group of friends who, you know, goes to parties and does things like that. Mm -hmm. and everyone pregames at someone's house before you go to the parties and like it, it, this this is what it is and you know I, I i just don't drink i mean i feel so bad when i drink mm -hmm. i i don't i don't want to do it um but it's a it's a constant battle kind of because my friends want me to and i just you know i i just really don't don't see it but when it comes to like eating out at restaurants and, and that sort of thing uh, it's really not a problem because in la i mean uh, it's 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 a it's a salad based menu always pretty much it's salads all these salads but a lot of times yeah, yeah but a lot of times there's an option you can like plus beef patty six dollars or pl plus chicken breast seven dollars so I'll, I'll just say you know can i just have you know just the, the patty or the chicken breast or um you know so th that's not too much of an issue and also it would be a problem i think if i couldn't explain it so, you know, a lot of people, I think they go carnivore and then they don't actually have any tools to explain why they're doing it. They don't really understand. They don't understand human evolution or just, you know, our, our biology, why we're supposed to eat meat and why it's the best thing for us. But I do. So when someone questions me, I'm pretty well equipped to, to answer the question. So it's not really a, a problem for me anymore. Plus, I love I, I love when someone challenges it. Because it just gives me, you know, gives me the chance to explain why they're wrong. And just and, tee off and, on them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's awesome. I, I actually, uh, I'm kind of feeding off of it almost. Like, someone, like, uh, I was once at, like, th this girl who I was with, we had, she had a graduation thing. And I was only, I was only eating meat. Like, there was a bunch of kebabs on the, on the table all laid out. And I would just grab the steak and the chicken. And then her friends are there. And then her friend's parents are there. And there are a bunch of doctors and other things like that. And they're just asking me, like, what do you, like, you, oh, you don't eat vegetables. I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't eat vegetables. And they say, why? And then I, I just explain to them. And it's just, it's just such a fun conversation to have. I, I enjoy it so much. I mean, it's not something I shy away from ever. Because, mm -hmm. but I mean, I mean, then again, there are some situations, I guess, where I'd rather just be left in peace. I'm having a bad day. I, I just don't want to be asked about why I'm doing what I'm doing sometimes. But usually, usually I'm all for it. I'm all for having the talk. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, me too. I mean, obviously I, I'm, I'm very interested in this and passionate about it. So I don't, I don't mind talking about it. Um, but it comes up a lot, you know, like me, you yeah, know, sure. so that's, that's gonna be a vegan nut central, but like, yeah. um, you know, you know, when I came to Australia, it was, it was surprisingly like that as well. And, uh, you know, in Perth in particular, tons and tons and tons of people were going vegan vegetarian. And so you know, I was just like, I it was, it was just like, I was just nuts. People were like, you do what? Like, well, you never eat this. It's like, well, well what about, you know, well, what about salad? Well, well, what about this? What about that? Yeah. It's, like, it's a plant. It's a plant. It's a plant. It's a plant. No, 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 no. But you have, you have to eat something. You just, you just couldn't grasp the concept. And yeah. um, that was, it was very funny. But, um, you know, people have been coming around. And so, you know, I, I, had to, I had to have this conversation with people when I first came to Perth, like two, three times a day like every damn day, it just kept coming up. And people were just like, they just they had so many questions, they just wanted to like get into it. And like, and, um, you know, so it, it eventually started, I think, spreading, you know, largely because, you know, uh, it's, it's just the information is getting out there. But I have to sort of, you know, think that, you know, to, to some degree, like I helped influence that by, by having a lot of these conversations and convincing people and them then going out like apostles and like spreading the word. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so now I'm, I get to the point where people see me just eating, you know, like a big stack of like, you know, eggs and bacon at the hospital. And they're like, Oh, you just, you just do eat meat. And I, I was just like, yeah, you know, just do carnivore. And they're like, Oh yeah. You know, my brother's doing that. Like he's getting, oh, cool. he's losing a lot of weight and he's like, you know, getting like, you know, you know, yeah, getting really good results in the gym and things like that. And so now they're actually talking about it. And, uh, it was actually, it was, it was actually quite, um, uh, interesting and flattering, uh, just the other day, I, I you know, saw this um, kid who had a, a sort of a ventric, a ventricular uh, perineal shunt. So it was a tube from his the drains in his brain, the sort of the cisterns in his brain, 
down to his abdomen to sort of drain off extra fluid mm-hmm. um, for, for hydrocephalus. And he just sort of, uh, you know, I was, I was admitting him, he had a problem with his shunt and we needed to bring him in for surgery. And, um, and he just sort of all of a sudden just asked me, he's just like, Hey, you know, can I ask you a question? I was like, yeah. And he said, you know, do you, do you only eat meat? And I was like, yeah, like how, how, how do you, you know, why do you ask that? He's like, well, actually, you know, I, I've, I've seen your videos. I actually follow you. And I was like, oh, really? Okay. You know, and I, you know, which is, you know, interesting to me, you know, uh, that, that they would do that. So it's, it's definitely gaining traction. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, which is, which is really good. And so hopefully it's just going to keep going with, with that grassroots uh, sort of momentum and then, and eventually hit mainstream and get started start getting tv shows and documentaries and and things like that and then people will have to discuss it and they'll have to debate it and you know paul saladino got ambushed on that show the doctors um oh, and yeah. he, he thought it was just going to be a friendly discussion amongst colleagues and they just they absolutely torpedoed him which was which is pretty bullshit on their yeah, on their I, part that was but like that was so annoying to watch but man i was so pissed that i wasn't the one in that seat uh, instead of paul i was just like oh my god i would have just just laid into these people and yeah. um you know because uh you know he, he was caught off guard but like i and, and it's easy you know when you do that it's 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 difficult to sort of you know rally and and uh and come around but and so i think he did i didn't i think he did quite well um all things considered but there was there were some things i was just looking at i'm like oh my god i would absolutely just tear these people apart right now and i was just like and, actually yelling, i was just like no say this say this say this say this say this <laughs> You know, it's different when you're yeah. in a situation, you're sort of blindsided by that. But, you know, I've been, I've been in situations like that where I've had, I've had people very, very aggressively, you know, try to debate me on things. And so um, I have, I have some practice in that and I would have loved to do that. And I, and, I, and that was sort of one of the things that, that, um, you know, when, I, when I've been doing this sort of thinking, it was just like, God, I, I'd really like to get to the point where, you know, I'm, I'm recognized enough that someone tries that shit on me. And yeah. tries like and tries like pull me in and ambush me. I was like, oh my yeah. god, I would just I would just love it. And again, yeah. they, they would just they would not see the what was coming on that one. Um, I mean, I, I have this I have this idea at UCLA, like the remember the, the epicenter of all vegans, right? Yeah. There's this there's this thing called Bruin Walk where everybody walks their classes. It's like one of the most populated places on campus. And I was thinking one day, maybe maybe um like once I'm I'm big enough to you know to, to that this would be really really funny. I put a sign that says like veganism is stupid. Changed my mind. Yeah, yeah. And I, just sit, yeah. and I just sit there and do one of those conversations with like you know the, I think Earthling Ed does it about veganism. You know why aren't you vegan yet? Change my like you know something like that. Yeah. And I think how how funny would that be if I'm in the place where vegans congregate and I'm <laughs> I'm saying veganism. I'm, I'm going to make an argument why veganism is the dumbest thing you could do, yeah. and I'll be you know with all these just yeah. screaming frantic blue haired crazy people telling mm. us saying saying you know veganism is the best thing like, yeah I, I think that'd be awesome so, yeah well yeah and and you, know, you say yeah um or was it like veganism is uh is bad for your health change my mind you yeah. know and you know be, keep keep it on your terms right you know you're just talking about health you know because they're going to go oh, the environment the ethics and this that, and the other and 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 you can argue all those things but uh, health, is, health is a big one but yeah but but just just keep them boxed in. Um, that's, mm-hmm. that's always, that's always a trick in debating these guys is they'll, they'll try to shift, they'll, they'll, they'll get red herrings and they'll try to shift the conversation and, and distract Be like, no, 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 we're, we're just talking about this. We're going to stay on topic. So, you know, uh, and so I'll say, well, oh, well, what about this? And what about, what about, you know, the environment? What about ethically and all this sort of things? Like, okay, well, you know, those are, those are very important things that definitely, you know, deserve uh, being discussed. But right now we're just talking about nutrition, just talking about just from a nutritional standpoint, you know, what is the best thing for humans to eat? And so, and it just keeps them back on track. And so they can't, they can't squirrel away before the, the situation is settled. And so then they'll eventually get to the point. If you, if you keep them on, on task, they'll eventually go like, okay, all right, well, I agree with you. Like nutritionally, yeah, I guess this is the best thing for us, but okay. environmentally. Okay, great. Once they concede that, then you can move on to the next that's, one. That, that, that's a great way to go about it. I like that a lot. Very yeah. important. Yeah. And so if you do this, just make sure it's just like, you know, veganism sucks, you know, and they, then it's a thousand different directions they can come from right yeah right, but if you right. say veganism is bad for your health well then they have to stay on track and then you start talking about you know environment it's like well no, no, we're just talking about bad for your health bad for your yeah, health we can, do the, we, can, we can do the environment after once we establish this it's it. like i'll be back next week and we'll have veganism <laughs> bad for the environment but right now yeah. is veganism bad for your health and then yeah. and that keeps them on on track and and you find that that's um 
that they sort of have to concede these points. And then you get to the environmental part and it's like, okay, well, the environment is like, great. Okay, let's talk about the environment. And then, and then you start winning that argument and they start looking for escape routes as well. Like, well, mm-hmm. but, you know, ethically like, okay, well, yeah, I understand. We need, do we need to talk about that? But right now we're talking about the environment. And they go, okay, all right. So environmentally, sure. But now 